coalition so far and um, <laughs> that it's held together um, so far. Yeah, so frankly, strong. frankly, um, I'm pleasantly surprised, yes. Um, you know, often Indonesian politicians are a bit fickle, often. Hmm. Um, and, and I think a few months ago, um, looking at past experience, hasn't been too good for for us and for other politicians. So I think yes, I am. I'm, I am pleasantly surprised. I think it's quite good, and I think it's it uh, it bodes well for um, for the coalition. I think the party leaders are quite are, are quite serious in trying to get things and keeping things and making decisions to keep the coalition together. So. Um, as far as I, I think, as far as I know, it's still intact. Yeah, as yes. of now. Yes. Is, is there a vote today? What's what's the result of the vote? Masih jalan, Masih right? You know the NPR. They have yeah. the vote on the NPR. So um, it depends on the result of the NPR. <laughs> you know, you may call me tonight. I may be in a different <laughs> mood. And <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so as of now, yes, I am. But just last week, there was you know uh, talk that uh, Petiga Pan or uh, Partai Democrat might jump ship and switch sides. How are, how are you on a day to day basis able to keep keep but, them in order? But you know, it's quite interesting. But the other side has problems too. Yeah. The other side, PDIP and the, 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 their four person, their four party coalition has had problems too. There's like five parties because PKPI is also involved. Um, and there were you know rumors that PKB was going to switch sides. Mm. You, you you heard of that, right? So PKB was thinking of switching sides to us. Um, and Hanura was making noises. Maybe they were trying to threaten uh, uh, and maybe blackmail Jokowi into giving more seats. So m- my surmise was that that was what they were trying to do. They were you know, putting out all these rumors about switching to us because until last week, they, they claimed that they had not been offered any specific ministerial positions. They had not been offered any a, a specific number of uh, ministerial positions and no names of ministerial positions. So that's what they were telling us. So interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it works both ways, you know. So, I mean, do you think Jokowi's being too naive in, in the fact that he's saying that, oh, I'm not going to horse trade um, seats for support? Um, it, is that not how Indonesian politics works? It doesn't seem like it. Well, I think it's something, I think it just confirms what, what Prabhu and I have felt for the last six months, that Jokowi is not his own man. He's, he'll become the president in name only, mm-hmm. but he won't have the authority to decide by himself. He will be, uh, basically, he will have to consult with and perhaps take orders from other people. And I think you know who I'm talking about, right? So, so specifically Megawati, mm-hmm. who is the party chairman. And Megawati uh, herself, on record, by the way, it's on YouTube. I think you can take a look on YouTube. She called him in public she called him a party worker. He was a petugas of the party. He was a he was um, petugas, yeah. Apa? He was an agent. He was a, an executive. He was an executive of the of mm-hmm. of the party. I remember, I remember. You remember that? Yeah. So he told her. He told he, he she told him in front of a whole meeting of PDIP uh, members that you know don't forget you know you know don't you know Jokowi don't forget that you're a party worker and you take your orders from the party basically. So yes, so so I think that's a problem. He doesn't, he can't make decisions by himself. So he he's already breaking his promises. If you notice, you know, and, you, he, and this is on the record. I can he's breaking his promises. He promised uh, during the presidential debates, and he promised in public that he would have a slim down cabinet. Mm-hmm. He would have a technocratic, professional, you know, a cabinet on merit, on technical merit. He's he's um, you know he's breaking that promise. He's giving sixteen ministerial positions. Uh, to politicians, and he even actually said in right in, in on the record that um, the, the balance of 18 ministerial positions may be given to you know, politi- uh, you know party politicians as well, because many of the party politicians were also very professional and technocratic. So uh, yeah, so yes, so the, in answer to your question, I think he's not um, he's not he doesn't call the shots by himself. And is that? Is what is the main reason why you, I mean do you think that is the reason why other parties are not jumping ship or that they want to switch sides 
like PKB, PKB, like you said, that uh, Djokovic is not his own man. I mean, why, why do you think it's, he's having such a struggle? I, I to think, get it to I, I think um, they're, they're frustrated, from what I understand uh, from comments that I've heard uh, in writing and, and uh, you know, through the grapevine that uh, they're frustrated, the parties are frustrated mm. because um, Jokowi can't make a decision mm. and, um, and they're getting mixed signals from different people. So they're getting signals from the use of color, they're getting mixed sig other signals from Jokowi and then they're getting signals from Megawati. So they, they, and, and then there are other stakeholders as well. Yeah. I mean it's obvious that the parties are obviously trying to, to find who, which, which, which side benefits them the most. So. What does the Red and White Coalition provide to to Golkar, to um, to Petika and Pan and Parti Democrat to stay within the coalition? Ask, ask what, what, are you, yeah. what are you promising them to we, say, we, we you have, stay with us? Well, we promise them. We, we jointly promise each other, by the way. But this is all decided in, in, a, in a committee of party chairman. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, uh, the ability to make decisions, have decision-making power, uh, basically at this at, at this moment in this legislative level, in Parliament, mm -hmm. and that uh, the five six parties in the coalition um, have basically uh, between them uh, authority, uh, political power to call shots. Um, and, it, and obviously, the power de depends on which uh, department of the of the government we're talking about. You know, there are eleven committees, and there are four badan, four upper agencies, four upper uh, badan, agencies. Yeah, we call it badan. So basically, in, in the American system or the <coughs> Philippine system, will be committees. So there are basically sixteen parliamentary committees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, eleven are called commissi. 11 commissions and the other ones are badan. So they're basically committees, 11 committees, 70 committees. And these 70 committees, the, the, coal, the Red and White Coalition have agreed that um, the, the, the constituent parties of the coalition would have, each one would have different um, chairmanships. Okay. Or chairpersonship. <laughs> and there's two weeks to go between before the October 20th inauguration. Do you believe any of these parties will jump ship? Of, of within your coalition, or do you believe it's strong enough to hold? I think it's still not strong enough to hold. Why do you think that? Um, is, is, Jaco is Jacoby not offering enough? Is, uh, it seems that he's not. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you one thing the party that he's not offering anything to is us, Put Gurindra. <laughs> Has, has there been any talks? I assume there's been no talks between the, the two sides. What's today's seven months? We haven't talked to him for seven months. Okay. Would you? If if one of his party members came, would you would you talk? Would you be open to talks with? Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, okay. the problem's not ours. Um, since you your your coalition. Okay, I'm willing to talk. Yeah. Because I will clarify it, but we will not accept the ministerial position. You will not accept? No. I see. Okay. We, we can talk. I mean, we'll talk about... The weather. Weather, we'll talk about the climate change, we'll talk about... There's no way you're going to be part of their administration. If, if uh, 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 no, Gurinda will not be part of the administration. Okay. Why? We have our reasons. What, 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 can you tell me what those reasons no, are? No, no, no. We, we have we decided we're not going to be part of the Jokowi-led government. Okay, uh, you have control of all the power seats in Parliament. So I'm curious on what your your first hundred days. Uh, what, what's your first hundred days? Uh, what your top priorities for Parliament? The types of legislation you want to start hitting first and now? Okay. Well, I can say um, what Karinda would like to do. Yep. The Red and White Coalition, I'm not at the position to tell you what, you know, basically um, I think one of the things we have to do as a Red and White Coalition is to consider President SBY's, um, it's called the Perpu, yeah, in Indonesian. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in English, it's uh, a substitute regulation, what's English? What's English? Uh, yeah, substitute regulation, yeah. in lieu of law, yeah? yeah. Okay. I, you know what I mean, right? Yes. 
Okay, so that's probably the top priority for us is to consider that. As far as Gurindra is concerned, um, our top priority, one of the top priorities would be to to actually um, uh, re to, to put into effect uh, the disability law. Um, this is for disabled people, for um, uh, handicapped people. You know, Gurinder has been pushing this uh, law through Parliament for the last two years. There are 37 million disabled people in Indonesia, mm -hmm. 3 million blind people, and uh, there's, there's no consideration for them at all. I mean, if you notice the buildings here in Jakarta, there are very few ramps. Right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, hardly any toilets for for disabled people and so forth and so forth. So, one of the things you may want to consider is to put a bill to. Um, so we have legislation to f basically um, force the central bank to print notes uh, in Braille. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, uh, because blind people have been cheated. You, know, uh, you can, they can't differentiate between a five thousand and yeah. a twenty thousand and a hundred thousand rupee note. So they say that the bill, the, the, the bill for the law, the special law for disabled people would be our top priority. Okay, that's number one. Okay. Okay, number two is also to put into effect, um, uh, to complete the law of, for, on human trafficking. That's also a top priority for Gurindra. Uh, in fact, my daughter got into parliament for that. Um, and then a, we may uh, put, try to, to um, introduce legislation uh, for reforestation mm. of, of Indonesia, uh, introducing legislation to increase the use of biofuels, uh, alternative energy. That's also a top priority from Prabowo and, and the Grinder Party. Now, on the other side, we may want to re we may have to react to some of Jokowi's initiatives. Okay, yeah. we've heard strong rumors that Jokowi would want to put a referendum. Give the Papua Papua province a referendum on independence. By the way, mm -hmm. uh, Red and White Coalition will oppose that uh, very strongly, Randy. Okay, uh, we will not tolerate any parts of Indonesia seceding from Indonesia. So that's uh, non-negotiable. And then we've heard um, rumors that the government wants to legalize the Communist Party, the Indonesian Communist Party, the PKI, mm -hmm. which you know has, since 1966 has been outlawed. Um, and we've heard some rumors that the Jokowi administration wants to legalize the PKI. And, and I'm sure I can speak on behalf of the, of the Red and White Coalition. Every party in the Red and White Coalition will oppose that strenu strenuously. Can I just go back on the, what you're, you're talking about, the uh, SBY's um, emergency legislation, the purple? Well, what's, um, what, what, what's the coalition's stance on that? Um, if that's going to be their top priority, yeah. are they going to Well, we will have to react. We have to react. I don't think an official position has been... But, but I understand that I think there's consensus among the, the six parties that we will consider um, favorably the passing to, to accept the purple. Because the purple um, is uh, to, an, to enable, to, to enable um, elections, direct elections to continue. Yeah. Yeah. But with ten conditions, there, you know, SBY yeah. has stated there are ten conditions, and one of the conditions is to that the legislators would verify, yeah, would vet, mm -hmm. would basically vet yeah. the, the the candidates. Okay, so independent candidates could be rejected by legislators. I, I'm a, a bit confused though. Uh, why then? Because those those ten, I mean, we were watching the the initial vote, and those ten amendments were. Uh, they were trying to add those to the amendment, right? Mm -hmm. to, to the bill. Mm -hmm. um, so why didn't the Red and White Coalition at the time then uh, allow that to happen and, 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 well, and reject wasn't, the... But it wasn't uh, only us. I mean, the PDIP coalition refused yeah. to accept that as well. So both, both coalitions refused to, ex to accept that. So are, is the Red and White Coalition actually for direct local elections? Um, that's, that's a possibility. Okay, so I mean, there is been oh, wait, conditional, yeah? conditional, conditional on the ten conditions. On the ten conditions, but that would be, and those ten conditions you're saying one is includes that the the candidates are chosen are are approved by the local legislatures. Yes. Okay. Candidates. The candidates. Yeah. Are and the candidates will go for election. Yeah. 
a direct election, but then this would prevent this would prevent unqualified candidates to to run for for you know um, leadership positions in their provinces. I mean, they, you know, 322. I mean, I don't know whether you are, you are, you, are, you you know this, but there are 322. Uh, regional leaders, you know, Bupatis and mayors, yeah. have either been indicted or convicted of corruption. These are directly elected leaders in the last 10 years. So one of the uh, uh, arguments by the other side has been that, that directly elected leaders are more honest than indirectly elected leaders. And I think the fact that 322 have been indicted or imprisoned um, is, is, is testimony to, to the fallacy of that argument from 524. And there's also uh, reports in other other media organizations saying that uh, the coalition would try to um, end direct elections for the president. No, oh, that's hogwash. I can tell you straight that it's a hogwash. We've never, I've never discussed it with Prabhu. Prabhu's never discussed it with Mongerinda. Okay. No. And I don't think any of the other parties linking about that either. Okay. I think that's classic case of disinformation by the other side. Mm. Um, and one of the biggest, one of the first uh, policies that Jokowi does seem to plan plan to do is, is looking at fuel subsidies uh, as a hike in fuel prices. As early as November, he said, um, his one of his advisors of the Hood said the uh, 3,000 rupiah hike in November. Um, was, would that be something that uh, Parliament would... The coalition would be against. Yeah, that's that's that that's a case of him breaking another promise. Mm. He promised that he would be against that. PDIP has been against that for ten years. Yeah, you know that. Mm -hmm. He promised not to do that. So my comment is, that's another promise he's breaking. Okay. Now, you're asking me how our coalition will react. We think that there's other ways of mitigating that. I don't think uh, you know. He's, I understand from Lohut Tumut's comment that he's thinking of a of a thirty a fifty percent hike, right? What's the price of uh, after now? He wants to increase it by three thousand, yeah. Not after. I mean, uh, 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 premium. Premium. Yeah. It's six thousand now, right? Yes. He wants to increase it by no, three thousand no. tonight. He wants to increase it by fifty percent. Yes. Yeah. Fifty um, percent fuel price increase if it's across the board. Fifty percent increase. Uh, we would favor more a gradual approach. I mean, that that that, that would be a shock to the system. It would, you know, and it would hurt the lower income people. It wouldn't hurt me. I, I don't. It doesn't make any difference to how I, how I feel or not. People like me. Yeah, but but to to I think the people from the lowest economic strata that would be a, a a big shock. So we would first of all we would look at the revenue side. We've always Prabhu's always maintained. I've always maintained. We want to make, look at the revenue side, tax revenues. Indonesia is one of the lowest tax, re tax revenue ratios to GDP in the world. He said that for the last year. Um, the only other country with lower uh, ratio is Pakistan. Okay, we think we can do with very little pain increase the number of people who pay tax without increasing tax rates. Okay, so the tax rates at, at my level would be remain thirty percent. Yeah, at my the office boys level would be ten or fifteen percent, uh, ten percent more likely. Um, but we would have more people in the net. So we, there, at the moment, only 12% of Indonesians pay tax. 12%. Officially, only 11% of Indonesians are poor. The World Bank says 40%. So I, I, I trust the World Bank's data more. So if that's the case, 60% of Indonesians should be paying tax. Only 12% of people pay tax. So I think what the, government, the Jokowi government should do and any uh, uh, you know competent government is to to look at the revenue side. So uh, we talked to the World Bank. Our our you know our campaign team talked to the World Bank. We think we can raise forty to fifty billion dollars a year, but getting more people people to pay tax. The, the World Bank told us they think sixty billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the lower number, which is fifty billion, that's six hundred trillion rupees. The fuel subsidies uh, subsidies only eat uh, eat up two hundred ninety trillion rupees. I think that's the latest number that I saw. 80, 81 trillion? No, 290 trillion. 290 trillion is what the government spends on fuel subsidies. We think by increasing tax revenues, we can raise 600 trillion. Okay? So that would be our answer, uh, Randy. Get more tax revenue. You can then reduce the fuel subsidies gradually. Okay? Without hurting people too much. 
So, I mean, part from what I um, <clears throat> would, though, the coalition support a fuel price hike if it's smaller than 50%, would they support a fuel price hike this year, by the end of this year, which is planned? We, we don't have, the parliament does not have the power to veto. Uh, yeah, I understand that. But um, I know the president can do it himself. Yes. But would, would the coalition support or oppose it even if they don't necessarily have a, a say in it? We probably oppose it on the grounds that there will be much, too much of a, a shock to the system. Uh, uh, let's say if you were to, in, to, in, to increase prices by 1,000 rupees, 1,500 rupees, you know, uh, we would, yes, we probably, uh, you know, uh, consent to that. Uh, but a 3,000 rupiah increase? Sorry, you would, sorry. We would consent to that, we would you, agree to you that. You consent to a... Uh, to a smaller increase, increments, uh, you know, smaller increments. Mm. By, by this year? So at, by, if, if it's a, if it's, because they're looking at between 500 to 3,000. So if it's below 3,000 by the end of this year... I say 1,000, I think we could uh, live at 1,000, mm. 500 to 1,000 increase. Mm. But a three thousand increase would be too much, I think. And if it, if it if it's higher than if you don't, because part of it was also I, um, if they increase the prices, they would want to obviously provide handouts to um, to the poor, in the middle, uh, to to limit the, the hurt. Um, but I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that these handouts, uh, these payouts, would have to be. Approved by Parliament because it, this is the reason why SBY last actually went to Parliament to get approval for the fuel price hike, so can, he can also get approval for the, um, the handouts. No, I think the last time was last year. He 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 tried to introduce a supplemental budget, okay. which had other elements besides the fuel price increase. And that's why he went to the Parliament. Okay. I think that was my reading. Um, cash ha cash handouts. Parliament that would not have to approve cash I, That I don't know, okay. frankly. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Now, our approach would be different, you know. If we were in power, what we would do is we would increase the number of public public transport, public buses, publicly owned buses, um, and then we would uh, then subsidize the bus companies. We would actually give the subsidies to the bus companies, mm -hmm. uh, but not directly to people. But people would then be... Would be uh, um, encouraged to go by public transport, you know. There's a sh there's a gross uh, uh, um, shortage of public buses. I mean, even Ahok mentioned that. I think he thinks that, that Jakarta needs four thousand buses a year, and that they only bought seven hundred or so, and expensive buses from China, even at that. Um, and uh, so that would be a different approach instead of just you know uh, uh, a straight uh, mm -hmm. increase in prices. Is there any policies that Jokowi, um, that you find common ground on, that you, uh, on any of his reforms, any of his policies that he, he spoke about in his campaign that you would, and your coalition would, would actually support and help pass um, and make law? Can you give me some examples? Um, yeah. I, his education program, his health care programs, um, his edu yeah, his education programs would be a, f a first one. Is that is that what is his education program? Uh, where eighty uh, percent of of teaching in, during the his, at the elementary level uh, would be based on uh, character building, and twenty percent on science, and that changes. Uh, I, I, you know, I, members of a coalition believe in the in, in a basic education. It's teaching arithmetic, teaching writing, teacher, teaching proper, you know, in, Indonesian language. And what I would want to do is reinstate foreign foreign language instruction in Indonesian schools. Now, if he supports that, we would support. Okay, but eighty percent in character building—that's a bit ambiguous, and that, that's one of this mental revolution that he's talking about, right? Yes, the too vague. Uh, very vague. It sounds like indoctrination. It's like brainwashing. I mean, <laughs> frankly, um, you know, what does it mean? You know, I like to see specifics. Mm. Okay, but if he's going to reinstate the English language, by the way, the English language is being phased out of Indonesian schools. 
which is bad policy. We, we disagree with that. English language, foreign languages should be taught as soon as possible to Indonesian school children. As you probably know, Randy, uh, 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 Indonesia, most Indonesians have a very poor command of English. Mm-hmm. They, they speak English badly and they write in, in Indonesian words. Um, uh, 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 and, and this is something we should rectify. Uh, I've, I strongly believe in, and my brother strongly believes in foreign language education. Okay. Uh, and basic, basic stuff, you know, writing Indonesian language. Many Indonesian students, including universities, just can't write Indonesian properly. All you need to do is look at resumes and job applications. SMSs, you know. Can't, you can't even put the comma and the apostrophes at the right place. I know, uh, uh, education is one of the weak points in this whole system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, education reforms, 80% uh, character building, I'm sorry, you know, give me specifics. Okay. Mr. Joko, we uh, will we'll consider, you know. Um, there's also uh, a report saying that there is... Oh, sorry, yep. uh, one thing I, want, I do want to say is that in our platform, we want to reintroduce ethics classes, there used to be ethics classes, Budi Pekerti, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Budi Pekerti was basically teaching Indonesian school children at, uh, at a grade school level, you know, um, the need to treat uh, elders properly with respect, to teach, uh, to treat your parents with respect and dignity, to be polite, you know, yeah. to, 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 to escort people across the street who are disabled or elderly, uh, stand up for elderly people in the bus. That's what the, that used to be taught in school in the in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Budi <coughs> Pekerti. That that was phased out 10, 10, 15 years ago. We want to reintroduce that now. If Jokowi wants to reintroduce that, yes. If if a lot of his policies, like I mean, the education program, for for example, or health health, and you don't like the coalition doesn't like how it's being run or or the programs in itself. Do you do you see Parliament becoming uh, an obstacle to to his programs uh, um, and and cutting budgets or being you know um, a, a way to counter what he's doing? I mean, what will the coalition do to if they don't like Jacoby's policies and how he's implementing it? Will they use the power of the budget and the power of the purse to? Um, and the power of investigation. It. If we find any any instances of corruption mm. that uh, we, we've, we've detected, you know, under his administration in, in DKI, you know, the Chinese buses that he yes. bought, you know, yes. you're aware that these buses made in China uh, were bought at the same price. Each bus was at the same price as Mercedes Benz and Volvo buses. Are you aware of that? Yes. Yes. Okay. That, that's what we're going to we will investigate that. Mm. Okay. Uh, you know, 120 million dollar, uh, uh, you know, uh, bus procurement contract. Uh, we're going to investigate that. Um, yeah, if we see that there, there is various problems, uh, we would, we, we would, yeah, we would use our power to to investigate and to and to obstruct. Okay, so I, I um, you know, I've only been here for a year and a half, but has have there been? I mean, the U.S. Congress has congressional investigations mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Is there precedent here of, of, of that, where Parliament yes. does its own investigations into... Um, the, 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 we had a president called Gus Dur, mm-hmm. Abdul Rahman Wahid, in 1999. He was impeached in 2001. Well, he was impeached and voted out of office as part of the impeachment for corruption, basically. Yeah. Um, it was a, actually quite minor. It was 40 billion rupees, right? Bulo mm-hmm. Gate, right? Bulo Gate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, so that's one instance. Um, and then Megawati became president, replacing yeah. him. Um, and then there have been various other investigations. I mean, I, there was another investigation uh, on um, on Apato, the, that bank. What was what was that bank called? Bank uh, Century. Bank Century. Yeah, that's one. DKI. And there was a bank. No, DKI was not parliamentary. Mm-hmm. There was one bank. Bank Bali. Bank Bali. Bank Bali. There was Bank Bali in 1998 under Habibi. That, that was a scandal. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was a scandal. In fact, the governor of the central bank went to prison, right? Shafiul yeah. Sabiri went to prison for that. So do yes, you, do you and that was because of a parliamentary investigation. So do you see more parliamentary investigations yeah. taking place? Yes. Yes. Is there any more that you can think of other than the bus that would be pursued? Yeah, there's the instances of corruption in Solo when Jokowi was mayor. 
uh, apparently these were um, allegations that were uh, filed with the KPK. You know what the KPK is, right? Yeah. So the KPK, um, <coughs> these were uh, accusations leveled against Jokowi dating from September 2012. These were filed with KPA 2012. KPK, KPK has done nothing about these allegations since September 2012, so it's about two years now. Mm. Um, so we're going to ask, we're going to be calling the head of the KPK uh, and ask him why he hasn't done anything for two years. And these are serious allegations. We're talking about 12 billion rupees a year of corruption. And that's just from the Kartu Pinter. That's from the educational uh, budget <coughs> of, uh, of the city of Solo. The, so that's one, that's one yeah. case. The, the markets have, um, I mean, they, they've been falling partly because of the current situation, the, the dollar strengthening and uh, unemployment in the U.S. is, is, is falling below 6%. But also uh, there's part because of the domestic policy, politics. Um, I don't think so. I, I don't agree with that. I think it's because of the balance of payments. Mm. We have a serious balance of payments problem. I, I think you know that, Randy. Yeah. Uh, the rupee is 12,200 because we're importing 800,000 barrels a day of oil denominated in, oil, in, in U.S. dollars. And our main products, uh, export products, are commodities which have fallen in price in the last two or three years. So we're exporting in lower pr low, low price commodities. We're, we're importing U.S. denominated uh, oil products. And, and you, you see the balance of payments problem, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse whether or not they, there's a, a standoff between Parliament and, and Indonesia. Now, on the stock market, uh, yes, it could be because of that, but it also be, I think it's because people are, are, are selling equities in Indonesia to buy uh, Alibaba, you know, um, and, and buying other equities in other parts mm -hmm. of the world. I mean, in, 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 in more promising and probably higher growth markets. So. Things are being things are relative. Okay. Yeah. But do you? I mean, so there's some do fear of, of political gridlock in Indonesia. I mean, what, what What are your expectations with the opposition in control of parliament and uh, Jokowi as president? Do you? Is there going to be political gridlock? gridlock we'll have to work. We'll have to work together for the, the good of the country. It seems to me. So he'll have to come to us, and we'll have to compromise. He'll have to compromise. He, he'll be a president with a co-equal partner in parliament. So maybe something he didn't expect. Mm, mm. Or his sponsors and his contributors didn't expect. But you do see working, being able to work together. On yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Um, Is there a fear in, 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 among from, from the foreign press yes. or people that they, they think we can't work together? Well, I, I, that's why I'm asking the question. Okay. I'm not really okay. sure, but yeah, there there is some uh, there is talk that um, the coalition will obstruct to obstruct because no, we're not. Um, I, I was asked by one of your four media colleagues about that was Channel, Channel News Asia asked me right yeah, last week, and I, I you know but are you going to be antagonistic towards your I said no, we're, not, we're going to we try to be cooperative, mm -hmm. but we'll work together. He will have to see us as a co equal partner. The benefit of the country, yeah. In his appointments, mm. you know there are 102 <coughs> appointments that he, the government, has to make, yeah. which requires parliamentary approval. We'll have to, you know, come to mutually acceptable appointments. Okay. 102 of them. Um, and on the foreign invest investment situation, um, there were a certain number of bills uh, at the end of uh, the old parliament's uh, term. There was a plantation bill, there was an insurance bill, and there was a banking bill that had, at some moment, and uh, earlier on, had limited foreign investment in those sectors. Um, all of that had been taken out when they were passed. Uh, not the banking bill, but the plantation bill was passed, and the insurance bill was passed without the foreign investment limits. I wanted to ask, is the coalition um, looking to pass legislation that would limit foreign investment in certain sectors? I think there are 120, we're looking at 122 bill, uh, laws <coughs> which, have, which are uh, I know, on the books, which, are, which exist, and which we'll review. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we, you know, there's no, you know, I, there's no 
um, specific program which law. I mean, the 120 laws we'll have to look, take a look, and then we'll have to announce which ones will. Well, we'll have, we can't do all 120 at the same time. We just don't have the time or the manpower. Well, we'll have to prioritize maybe the top 10 or 20 bills that we have to look at and maybe review and then revise. And uh, well, where we have a problem is the fact that foreign institutions have, have unfettered access to our services sector. I mean, you have banks, foreign banks, which have 2,000 branches here. Another one has 1,000 branches here. And then when we when we look at Indonesian uh, banks trying to open branches in the in the counterparts uh, you know uh, market mm -hmm. uh, where we have you know uh, a great uh, amount of difficulty in getting licenses you know um, mm -hmm. Chinese banks the banks from the People's Republic of China come here unfettered access to our market you see Chinese banks all over Indonesia and in, you know, in second tier and third tier cities. We, we we have difficulty in getting a license, brand, brand, you know, licenses to go to, to you know beyond Shanghai. In fact, one of our banks has a problem opening renminbi accounts. They're allowed to do U.S. dollar accounts. I mean, U.S. dollar accounts in Shanghai. I mean, that limits the market, doesn't it? And that limits your 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 consumer base, your customer base. I mean, that's where we have an issue. We have an issue in in services, in insurance, in banking. Um, I think we we need a, a level playing field. Yeah, that's, I think. I think all the members of the coalition share the same view. Uh, others, you know, there's 122 laws. You said there's the top 10. Uh, is the oil and energy law part of that? Could I mean, be. Yeah. And um, do you like how it, it, the oil and energy law looks now? Um, because there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, this has been going on. It hasn't been passed for years. There's still a lot of uncertainty over the over the legality of the regulator. Um, and that you know, investment's been getting held up because of it. I'm yeah. just wondering what the priority yeah, is. Yeah, I think so. I think when oil and gas bill will be one of our priorities. Um, I think we want to we want to have an oil and gas bill which will encourage investment and exploration. Mm -hmm. I mean, our you know our production has been decreasing for the last 15 years. And one of the, from what I understand, from oil and gas, my oil and gas uh, uh, peers, because you know I'm in the oil and gas business, I, I've been for a long time. Um, uh, one of the complaints is that incentives are not, you know, the incentives yeah. are not uh, there to encourage high risk investment, especially in offshore offshore investment. And of course, we're talking about shale gas. Shale oil and gas is very risky, as you know. And what should be the role of the regulator? Um, there's a lot of uh, questions on SKK Migas. Obviously, they got hit by the corruption scandals. Mm -hmm. um, and there's talk that maybe the regulator that should go back to Pertamina. Um, what, what's your we opinion? want, we want Gurinder and I think the other parties uh, in the coalition want to strengthen the, the role of Pertamina. We want Pertamina to be a national champion. We don't think Pertamina should be considered just a, another oil company. You know, to be treated like any other oil company and to be treated in the same way that we would treat Exxon or ConocoPhillips or Chevron or Total or Shell or BP. No, Pertamina is a national oil company. It's an, it should be a national champion. The same way that Total is a French national champion. So, way, you know, so the it way. should be both roles. It yeah, should also the, be yeah, yeah, it's in the same way that CNPC and CNUC and, and yeah. uh, Sinopec are, are national champions for, for China. Uh, and Rosneft and Luke Oil, the national champions of Russia. But that brought issues in the past, and that's why, for what I understand, that that was the roles were broken up, and that's why. I mean, how do you make sure in the future that doesn't occur again? That these uh, that it it, it is run uh, in a, an efficient manner. You know, Pertamina, just because it's a state-owned company, doesn't have to be a bureaucracy, doesn't have to be just like a government agency. I mean, you can have Pertamina run professionally like, you know, like a Shell or a BP. BP for a long time was a government, it was, was, was controlled by the UK Treasury, you know. And, and yet, uh, um, BP executives were paid, you know, market salaries, and then they were paid, you know, uh, uh, salaries which were... Uh, competitive with other, you know, with uh, private enterprises. Pertamina, as a state-owned company, can be run professionally, just like the way that uh, Garuda has been run by. Sure, but by to, be a, to be a regulator at the same time, you know that. Ah, okay. I, no, I didn't say that. A oh. Regulator um, uh, Pertamina as a regulator. That's something that we will have to 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 reconsider. Oh, okay. Sorry. I <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> so you wouldn't want 
SKK Migas to be put in under uh, Pertamina's umbrella? Um, yeah, could could be, but you know we don't want Pertamina to be considered just like any other company bidding for blocks. You know, you, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. We will, we we want, and I think this is the sentiment from the Red and White Coalition. We want to give preference for Pertamina right. as a state-owned enterprise. So that being the main case, if there are blocks which are going to be relinquished by foreign oil companies, yeah. and there, there are several coming up as for renewal or for the, the relinquishment. Um, we would give automatic, we would give preference to Pertamina for those blocks. Okay. Um, I think that is most of my questions. Uh, you have another half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> is there, well, is there anything you want to add um, that, that I haven't touched, touched on or you want to elaborate on? Do yeah, I, I just want to, you know, I mean, there were ac- there were acquisition, uh, accusations in the press, in some of the press, that uh, Prabowo was going to nationalize foreign assets. I don't know whether you, were you, you, you heard those accusations. I, I, I those are accusations of slander. You know, we, we've, can you get me the, the, the English version of our program, of sure. the program? We put our program, we announced our program to the press, to the public in July of 2013. Nowhere in our program as a state we're going to nationalize anything. In fact, we want to encourage foreign investment. We want to concentrate on investments, uh, infrastructure. We want to concentrate on the revenue side of the government. We want to increase taxes, uh, increase not tax rates, but increase tax revenues. Okay, but okay, that's ne- neither here nor there. We lost the election, so we won't be in charge of the executive branch. But one of the things I want to add is that I think there's a lot of slander going on and the disinformation about my brother's platform. You know. And one of them is nationalization. We've never, never acted, and he's never been in, uh, in favor of nationalizing. Okay, so this is how we can take this. But is, is, there, is there something that, with, with the control of Parliament, that you can do to encourage foreign investment that you're looking to do? Uh, but that, that can only be in, uh, in conjunction with, um, let's say, the Foreign Investment Board, BKPM, if they wanted to make things uh, less, uh, you know, less bureaucratic, uh, fewer... Permits, fewer license needed. Um, we we'll have to discuss that with BKP. I mean, I, mean, I don't, I don't, I think it'd be un, unlikely, and I think um, probably counterproductive for us to increase to introduce legislation mm. that the government won't won't like, won't execute, you know, or carry out. Yeah. Okay, if you know what I mean. If we were to say, let's do this, let's do, to encourage foreign investment, and if the executive branch were to be reluctant to enforce it, just a waste of time. And apologies for my ignorance, but I, is uh, in the U.S. Congress has to approve the cabinet ministers? No, we don't. You, here, you no, don't. No. Yoko, we, uh, Parliament doesn't have any say uh, in who he chooses. As, as cabinet ministers, yeah. 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 Uh, where we do have, we, we where the Parliament has uh, uh, veto power. Is the commander of the armed forces? Mm. Um, chief of the, the chief of national police. Uh, KP, uh, uh, MK, yeah? MK, MK. Uh, three members of three members of the nine ma- three of the nine members of the constitutional court, uh, and then a Supreme Court judges. Yeah, I mean that's a whole list. Yeah, yeah of, yeah. of hundred. Yeah, okay. commissional judicial com- uh, the judicial commission. Yeah, uh, attorney general uh, is the pr- the president's prerogative. Cabinet minister is president's prerogative. Bin, uh, bin is president's prerogative. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I think in the States is Senate, Senate confirmation. Yes. Oh, yeah, ambassadors. Uh, in the Indonesian parliament has authority, has, has veto power over uh, ambassadors, ambassadorships. There's also talk you, um, that you want to try to, uh, the coalition would try to impeach Jokowi. Well, we found, you know, C- cases of criminal, you know, uh, conduct. Yes, okay. but there's you haven't found any issues or reasons to try uh, to to start a process of impeachment no. against uh, no. Jacob. No. Okay. Why, why do you think you, Prabo, and the coalition are being um, in some media organizations the the spotlight sh- shined on them is so dark? 
you ask Mr. Sokin Wanandi and Mr. James Riyadi and, and other media owners, you ask That's them local, that. but what, I mean, there's certain, I, I mean, also foreign, I'm not saying think, international. But, but let's face it, region. that's a foreign media, uh, uh, okay, I yeah. won't speak on behalf of Reuters, but foreign media, you, you have your friends and you have your network and you have people you consult with in, in Jakarta, and many of them, uh, you know, uh, have not traditionally been friends of Prabhu. Uh, and I cite, you can get this on the record, I cite Jakarta Globe and Jakarta Post and Temple Magazine, Mr. Gunawan Muhammad is not a, a great fan of Prabhu. And, and I, my understanding is they've been saying bad things about Prabhu, especially in the last six months. So, you know, nationalization, where did that come from, you know? Mm. Um, it didn't come from us, okay? Post. Um, it, came from the, it came from the Jakarta Post, right? Best of interest. Yeah, um, and what else? Uh, impeachment? I mean, what else? I mean, where did that come from, you know? Um, the indirect elections, the, going back to the NPR, it didn't come from us. Well, I, never, I was never privy to that sort of, you know, and I would usually be privy to those discussions. It never came from us, you know. But I, and there's a reason. There's a reason, and Prabowo's enemies don't want him to be, you know, to be looked at in a good light. And uh, and that's, I think that's probably the reason why, in my opinion. All right, and hey, if you speak to your brother, I, I, I would I would like to interview. Uh, yeah, he's keeping a low profile at the moment, and he's trying to make make sure that we win in the NPR and other places. Would he uh, Would he like to run in two thousand fifteen or two thousand nineteen? Would he like to run again? I haven't asked him. I mean, is the ultimate gain from uh, what you're doing in Parliament is so to prepare for two thousand nineteen? No, no, not really. Is to make sure that we have our own say and we have a co-equal say in the running of this country. Okay. You know, there are rumors. No, I, I, there are rumors that he wants to legalize the PKI, the Indonesian Communist Party. And the rumors are getting stronger and stronger. Okay. That, I hope, doesn't come to pass. Uh, but that is something that we would actively oppose. Okay. Okay, that's one thing. A referendum for Papua and other regions of Indonesia, that's, I've heard that for six months now, and it's getting stronger and stronger. That's okay. all over my dead body. Kind yeah, that, that, that is unacceptable to us. We will oppose that actively, okay? So those two things, okay? Make, we want to make sure that, that uh, this country is run in a proper way, and that we, you know, uh, and that's why. I mean, setting for, you know, five years from now, he'll be 68. <coughs> I don't know whether he'll have the energy or not for that, you know? Um, we haven't talked about it. Uh, my last question. I mean, how was how how was it personally for the lo- the loss, the presidential, the oh, losing? It was devastating loss. Yeah. yeah, we thought we won the election, but the constitutional court sorry, uh, you know, thought otherwise. So um, yeah, it was devastating. We all I felt very bad. Pra- Prabowo felt very bad. But mm-hmm. I think that's life goes on. You know, I mean, you know, you know, we we did that, and we have to go on. Not very pleasant, but we have to drive those on. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I think we felt the same way that Al Gore felt in 2000. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yes. If you follow American politics. Yes. Yes. And by the way, in direct elections, you know, in America, you, you know, if, as a Filipino, you know that in the states, presidents are, are elected indirectly. They're not elected directly. For the electoral college. You know yes. that. Right. Okay. So many Indonesians don't know that. Mm-hmm. And that's very democratic. I, I think a lot of Americans don't know. Yeah, but it's very, it's very democratic. It's a very democratic system. It's worked for 230 years. Uh, yeah, 220 years in the States. And it's, you know, uh, Al Gore won by 500,000 votes, as you know, but he lost the election. You know? Now, we're not thinking of that, but, as you know, we're talking about indirect elections. But okay, now there, we have the Perpu coming in. We'll, we'll look at that. We'll look at the 10 conditions. You know, nothing's on the off the table, and we may agree to that. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Randy. You're going to be here for how long? Uh, at least another year. Another year. Unless they change. Do you me know out. Maria Ressa? No. Uh, no. From CNN. From ex CNN. Kathy Kian. Kian from CNN. You know Kian. Yeah. You know oh, but, but Maria Ressa is back here. You know. Yes. I, I met her. But she, not with CNN. No, no. She's with. She's from, from Rappler. She's yeah, with yeah, Rappler. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, so she's here, and Kiate Kiano's here, friend. She's Filipino. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Thank you very and, much. And, and thanks for being patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course.
Okay, second we can do. Yeah. If I have any follow-up questions, do I um, send them to yes. you? I need three. Any of these three. Any of these three. Because you would have a cell phone number that I Actually, can I do. send you I do. to. Um, but, uh, if you commit to me that you won't give my number to an insurance salesman. I... I Okay. It's promise mine. you, but if, if yeah. But yeah, it's there. My number is there. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. My mobile number is there. Insurance salesman or a dating yeah. service. <laughs> dating <laughs> service for you. There was dating one, service. There was one box just recently. A dating Doing service. Very well, I mean, a different dating service for you. <laughs> <laughs> for senior citizens. <laughs> Filipino already. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we all look alike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. We do. Filipinos and Indonesians. I always uh, thought. I have people people think I'm a Chinese Filipino. When I go People always tell me that I'm, I'm Filipino, too. Yeah. 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 The Chinese, I speak more Tagalog than he does. Yeah, he does. Well, she, she doesn't. That you, do, you speak Tagalog? Yeah, I was in the middle of the Yeah, but you speak Tagalog.